The Fantex PHTC14PE is a twin tower CPU cooler that sells for around 75 to 105 US dollars. Let's take a closer look. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. Now I'm going to start off this review by looking up this cooler on Fantex's website. Hmm, this website doesn't actually have any marketing at all for this CPU cooler, and I don't think that's a very good sign for this cooler. All there really is is the basic information about the cooler and what comes in the box. Okay, since that was such a waste of time, let's get right into this and open up the box. So there is the heatsink and fans, a small box that I assume has the mounting hardware in it, and yes it does. There's also quite a few folded sheets of paper in many, many different languages. There is also a tube of thermal compound and a fan splitter. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the fans and the heatsink. There are five copper heat pipes that have been nickel plated, so they are nice and shiny. The cold plate is also copper and again has been nickel plated. The fins are aluminum with an anti-corrosion coating on them. This cooler comes with two PHF140HP fans. Now the box indicates that the two fans have a rated RPM between 600 and 1300, but the box also indicates that the fans have nine blades, but I only count seven blades, so that's something I'm going to have to check out. So as you can see, these fans are not standard 140 millimeter fans. They are rounded off at the corners. The metal clips that attach the fans to the heatsink don't attach directly to the fans. There are these little plastic nub things that fit into the fans that hold the metal clips. The heatsink alone measures out to be 160 millimeters high by 140 millimeters wide by 134 millimeters deep. Now once you add the two fans, that increases to 170 millimeters high by 140 millimeters wide by 159 millimeters deep. Looking at the cooler right now, I have my doubts that there is enough clearance for the fans to clear taller heat spreaders. So if you do have taller heat spreaders on your RAM, this cooler probably isn't for you. Now the PHTC14PE is compatible with Intel LGA2011, 1155, 1156, 1366, and 775. Now PC Part Picker does indicate that this cooler is compatible with LGA 1151, 1150, and 1200, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Now for AMD compatibility, it's compatible with pretty much everything. So you have your FM1, your AM3+, your AM3, your AM2+, and your AM2. And again, PC Part Picker does indicate that this cooler is compatible with AM4. And if it's not, then this video is going to go very weird very quickly. So I am going to use one of my spare motherboards to demonstrate the installation on AM4. Now this is a little annoying, but it is pretty simple. And before you start, make sure you do have a flat, sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat. But in a pinch, you can use the box that your motherboard came in. Now you will require an AM4 backplate. If you can't find the one that came with your motherboard, then you'll need to go buy one and you'll also need a Phillips 2 screwdriver. Now place the backplate onto the backside of the motherboard, then place the motherboard onto your mat. Find the AMD mounting hardware package. In that package, find the four plastic studs. Place the plastic studs over the four standoffs of the backplate, then find the strip adapters and place them on top of the plastic studs. The direction of the strip adapters will be facing in, so that is towards the CPU then find the four screws. Now for AM4, the screws will go through the further out holes on the strip adapters. Tighten the screws until they stop, then grab the heatsink and fans. If you haven't already, remove the fans from the heatsink. Now if you need to, clean off your CPU with some isopropylene alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU, making sure to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, then place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads to the screws on the strip adapters. Tighten the screws until they stop, then reinstall the fans onto the heatsink, and you're all done. Now, the mainstream Intel installation is pretty similar to this. 
but in that case, you do use the provided backplate. Okay, now I have the cooler mounted to my test bench and I have already ran all my tests. So now I'm gonna use my tachometer to find out the actual RPM of these fans. So at 100% fan speed, I'm getting and dropping the fan speed all the way down, I'm getting 360 RPM. So between 350 and 1650 RPM plus minus, maybe 300 to 1600. So that is the RPM I'm getting on these seven bladed fans. And the DBA range I'm getting is between 32, which is actually my noise floor, and 37.3 DBA. Now, before I get into the temperature testing, if you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of the CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card up above and I'll also link it in the description. Okay, I will be adding more coolers to these charts as I test and review more coolers, but so far I've only tested two coolers, so this is what I have. The Twin Tower Fantex cooler performed as well as the Hyper 212 when both coolers were noise normalized to 35 dBA with a temperature of 76.5 Celsius. Now when you just let the fans go at full speed, the PHTC14PE does lose to the Hyper 212 just barely with a temperature of 76 Celsius. Now the Hyper 212 is 3 dBA louder and is less than 1 Celsius cooler. For the price difference between these two coolers, one would think that the much larger, more expensive cooler would perform better, but in this testing that is not the case. And that is why running tests on more than one CPU is needed, because looking at the 150 watt test results from the 3900 XT tells a very different story. With the fans noise normalized to 35 dBA, the mass of the Fantex Twin Tower cooler allows it to manage the additional heat much better with a temperature of 82.7 Celsius. And in this case, the Hyper 212 did actually fail the test. It was thermally throttling. And with the fans running at full speed, the temperature only went down to 82.3 Celsius. So what do I think of the Fantex PHTC14PE? The fans that come on the cooler are really quite quiet. So if that's something that's important to you, these really aren't too bad. But as per my testing, it really doesn't make any sense to buy this cooler for a lower wattage CPU. Now for a higher wattage CPU, it does work, but because I really only have this one cooler tested for a higher wattage CPU at this point in time, I'm really not very comfortable recommending it because I'm just not sure if it's a good buy. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, think about subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I have a Discord server. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.